Okay, we're finally to the point where we can start looking at the data processing code inside of the RETMAP code that I wrote for Rodolfo's market comparison data. I have two windows open. On the left side we see the uh, website where I host the RETMAP data viz at lingering lingeringcode.github.io forward slash retmap time series hyphenated and on the right side we have a code editor open with the retmap uh, code that I wrote inside of it. Before we open up and dig through some of these functions let's quickly review the console logs that I wrote that print out to the, the console on the website. So this is meant for pedagogical purposes. I wrote these console logs inside of the code here. So if we look, if you inspect the element, open it up, you should see inside the console. In this case, uh, right now, we have index, which is the file, index.html. On line 62, I apparently wrote something that printed out retrieved spreadsheet data parsed it as a JSON object. So let me just verify that. If I open up the get data function and scroll down to line 62, we see a console log that indeed enabled me to print out that message. It says, okay, retrieve spreadsheet data, new line, parsed it as a JSON object, new line, and then I even printed out the data itself that it retrieved. Before we really dig into the JavaScript, that's the, the rhythms that I set up with the console logs here in the browser that you can, we are going to review it first before we take a look at it more closely in the JavaScript code. Because it's important that we understand first the data and how it went from one form to another, to another, and another. It was processed. All right. So again, first I had to get the data. And this should look very familiar. On um, index line 64, the, I printed out the data that I retrieved. From the previous video, we should recall how this is a JSON object. It starts, it opens with a curly brace to suggest this is an object. And inside of it, we have some key value pairs. And what we care about are the, the, is the feed. So, here we have feed, and inside of feed, um, that's an object as well. You can see how it's nested. Inside feed, we have 17 different um, items in an array of objects. So here we have the first one, which would be implicitly we know as, uh, let's see, week one. So if I close this up, by the way, right, we have 0 through 16 with a length of 17. There's 17 weeks. So this would be the first week. And if you recall, the things I was curious about and wanted to grab are these ones right here with these, I think I called it gobbledygook. And what I like about, again, Chrome's uh, console and inspector Firefox might do this as well. I just use this more um, typically. We can even see the nested functions here. We can see feed.entry. We have the first item, zero. And then specifically with dot notation, we can see feed.entry dot, again, this particular key of GSX dollar sign underscore CN6CA corresponds to an object with a key of t value of a string week 1 dash 912 which is the date um, according to Rodolfo right in his table data and then for that those table data it's then compared across the years if you recall okay here's a week which is a row and across that row this is for the first week or I'm sorry the first year 2012-13 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, and so on, right? 
So that's how that works. Um, and that's what I was curious about getting is the stuff inside of feed, entry, and then these particular key value pairs across here. So, but what's interesting, right, is that I had to first get the data. So what we can see here on line 62 and 64 is, okay, I actually received the data. So let's go over to the code now. In this get data function, I'm not going to belabor every piece of it. I tried to document it, maybe over document it, to provide some um, uh, means for people to look through it, research what it means to actually request um, data from a different URL like I did. And that requires um, instantiating what we call a request object in JavaScript. So how can your computer talk to another computer and request a page and its contents? That's what a request does. And this whole function is designed around requesting some kind of data object from a specific uniform resource uh, locator or link, a URL. And here's how I built the URL with variables up here, so strings that I pieced together to create Rodolfo's specific um, uh, feed. And where the magic happens, again, is inside of when it actually loads successfully. So I, um, again, I'm not going to go over the details of this particular function, but what you can see and hopefully start reading based on your ideas of scope, assignments, functions, you know, variables, that are instantiated and given certain kinds of values, concatenation with these plus signs. Um, knowing all of that, I hope that this helps you understand how, oh, I can look up request objects now and see how Lindgren did this. Oh, he had to do a lot of different kinds of checks too. If it's actually successful, with a successful message, then I can do something. But sometimes it, it errors out, so you need to account for that. Um, but the important part is I got it, I saved it to a variable named data, so that became um, a JSON object, because I parsed this request object rendered as response text, that's a method specific to request, and I parsed it, json.parse, I applied that method to it to say, I want that to be a JSON object so I can read it and format it in format data. So that's why I did what I did there. You can research request objects more on your own time, but the important part is that I had to get the data from that URL that we reviewed in other videos as well, and made it into specifically a JSON object that I could pass as a, an argument to format data. So let's close up get data and look at what's going on inside of format data. So you can see here that per, uh, argument became a parameter and I just named it the same thing for consistency. You can name it anything. I could have named it um, Chris <laughs> um, or just the word letter D. But in this case I wanted to be um, kind of consistent across like how the data is moving from one format or function to the next. So let's move back to the Chrome browser and take a look at how I did this. Um, <clears throat> In my console logs, I wrote out on line 92, the requested spreadsheet data in the JSON format has been passed as a parameter for the format data function. So let's open that up in the code, line 92. Oh, I'm sorry. We're supposed to be in format data now. There we go. So we can see 91 is where the, the function is defined as format data. I've given it a name, and this is where I wrote it out. I just said, OK. If you don't quite understand how arguments and parameters work, this is it. I passed it from format or get data to format data. And look, here it is. I've this and this are um, the console log is re relying on this um, parameter right there. Okay. So before we get mired in some of the details of like why am I defining all these variables, let's take a look at what happens inside of this. Um, again, the same 
object is present here as it is there because I've passed it along. And now inside of it, let's see what I do. Let me close this up so it's not distracting. In the code, I documented with logs again, starting on line um, 162. I wrote out um, a little log that said, hey, look, I wrote out each of those weeks data and I tried to separate them out per each year. I tried to figure out how can I bundle these in each year because that's the problem that I was facing. How do I create multiple lines um, with the data that I was given? Because right now they're not bundled by year, they're bundled per week. I don't want a per week line, right? I want a per year line that is then um, tracked across weeks. So that's the data processing problem, if you recall, is that I needed to bundle these uh, weekly um, data entries across 17 weeks per year. So that's a different aggregate perspective, right? Like I'm not looking per week in this chart. Um, I'm looking at per year per week. So that's the problem. So I needed to take those 17 values and based on how I knew they were structured, so again, if I look at feed, let's do it up here actually, because this is, I think, already listed out for me. Yeah, under entry, recall one, or, you know, we've got 17 different weeks, and this is year one, <clears throat> 2012 13. And if we open up the second one, right here, again. This is uh, for 2012 and 13. But again, it's per week, not per year. So I need to take all of this key value pairs and put them in an array, a list, a meaningful set of values. So I used a for loop and I bundled them into um, a variable for each year. And here's 2012 and 13. 68 through 205. So all 17 weeks for that year. Okay, let's take a look at that in the code. So line 162, bear that in mind. I knew I needed these these uh, buckets, these, these arrays. So that's how I, I remember scope is about inside this function, I'm gonna need a space to put those values that are in the JSON object. So I wrote a, a consistent kind of naming scheme for each one and typed it as an array, meaning I said this is definitely going to be an array, a list of items. So let's type it as that. And then um, what I had to do is essentially go down here and I wrote a for loop. And what, I'm, what I did here is I got the length of the JSON object itself, and then I applied that length value to right here so that I could say start at zero and then uh, iterate across all length of it. So that's what this value does here. I guess that's one thing we haven't covered, but if you want to read more about for loops, definitely do so. What I essentially did is I, I programmed this to for each entry, push the specific year data to those array lists. That's how this is working at a top technical level. How do I go from, let's see here, this feed, data feed, and each entry that has this data right here, and then start piecing them out so that I can put one by one, kind of plop them in. Think of it as like I'm taking a little value like this, 68, and I'm pushing it to each array. That's what I'm doing here. So in this case, okay, let's define first, how do I get there? Give me a sec here. First, we have to tell JavaScript we need to push something to a specific array. So I knew for 2012 and 13, I have an array that I've created. I'm going to push 
from the data object, the JSON object, I have to look inside the feed object. So I say data.feed. Then I have to go to another nested level, right? Dot entry. And if you remember, each one has a value associated with it, which is an index 0 through 16 in this case. So I have to go through each entry, which are there are 17, and each entry has also 17 entries. So I'm programmatically going through each data.feed.entry to then push the specific year data at the particular indices of um, 0 through 16. That's what the i becomes. i is a, now a dynamic number that changes from 0 and it goes through until it gets to 16. 0 through 16 is 17 total, right? So that's how we are able to tell the computer, I want that specific value at, in this case we have gsx just rc dot that text value. In this case, it'll be this one right here for the first one of 68. And the next one would be the value of 83. See how it's text, that, that um, T value, T key, 83 value. All right, so stay with me. This for loop goes through each instance within data.feed.entry to push the specific column cell value to the year data that I want. So all the week data for each year I can push specifically based on the recurrent key value pairs. And let me close that up so that we don't get too muddled up. I printed out after the for loop. Here's an example of what happened. So instead of it now being separated per week, I now have an array that I printed out at line 165. I have 17 values inside of it. From 68, notice how 68, 83, all the way through in the order that I desire as well, by the way. So now I have these nice bundled arrays per year. But now I have to actually label them. I need that label of year for my data viz. So I wrote a little function called write years within format data. Within that scope, I say, OK, you did all that. Great. Now go to this function that's defined down here and bind together the year label with that those arrays. So remember, I instantiated these as well, these objects. We also might call them dictionaries. So now I can label the year with a key of year and a value of a text value, 2012-13, comma, and I want another object in there, or another key value pair. Here's where I apply those um, week arrays. I give it a key of weeks, WKS, and then I add the array right there. So let's see what happens. So at right years, I write them all, and check it out. Afterwards, after, here's right years that starts and closes. Let me close it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, don't want to close it up quite yet. Here's the closing part. In, I did it before that. So I, def I bundled them all together, and I said, after right years is complete, here's an example and it's the year 2012-13 again for consistency on lines 205 and 206. So here it is, 206. Check it out. I have an object now that I've defined as year 12-13 that has one year 2012-13 string and then I have an array list of string values for each week so now I've put them together, I've bundled them. Brilliant. But now I need to bundle those objects that are separate into um, an array of objects. So I wrote this function, write market data. So this to me is the last step. I just need now to, in this function, create a variable 
that's an ob typed as a, an array, and another one as an array. So I can push all of those object arrays as a list, one nice master list. And then what I do, just for good measure, is I take that full year data array of objects and I assign it to another array. Um, and then I write out my console logs down here. So now I have seven years, and each year has, together with it, the 17 weeks of postings. So to me, that's what I needed to be able to create these individual lines that tracked across per week. So that's how I did it. After I got that year data uh, variable there, I sent it on a merry way to the paint data viz function that's um, defined down here. And you can look more into the different templates for multi-lines in D3, but maybe just for good measure, if we open it up, I've collapsed everything. And the most important, well, there's multiple spaces that I use this, but I take that data that's formatted in that way, and this is where I use it specifically to start making those different lines. Again, I'm not going to review it here, but this is where the magic does happen. So that's a job for you to start going on your own D3 visualization journey to start figuring out, okay, now that I know how to read data, I know how to read code a little bit, there's a lot to learn still, right, um, that I haven't covered and, and I'm not able to cover in this tutorial series, but I hope at least you feel the sense that you can um, understand that, oh, what are all these curly braces and square brackets, dots, um, variable assignments, what are all these things doing? And I hope that helps you be able to parse and understand a lot of the tutorials that are already out there. Because to me, that's often the missing set of knowledges is the more stable stuff when it comes to like data structures are pretty much one of the more durable artifacts in digital um, environments. So if you start figuring out those durable texts, if you will, you can start figuring out how to write them programmatically with programming languages. I hope this has been useful. Um, let me know and also Rodolfo will know if you have any questions about anything, we'd be happy to uh, review those. All right, good luck out there.